The only indigenous person to feature on the Australian banknotes is David Unipon. Let's find out a little bit about him. The Australian $50 note. It's touched, it's handled, it's exchanged millions of times a day. But the story of the man depicted on that note is to this day largely unknown. And what an untold story it is. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Is it true? Do you not really know anything about this man? David and I, Pon, do you know anything about him? Let me know now in the comments. David Unipon. Unipon. Proud Narangeri man, was born in 1872 at the Point Maclean Mission in South Australia. He was a preacher, he was an author, and he was a poet. But David's legacy will be that of an inventor. Perpetual motion, a theory that continues to be unsolved. David spent his life trying to achieve it, and it was during this quest that he changed the destiny of Australia as we know it. If we're talking about the sheep shears, then it's not just Australia that he changed the lives of, did he? Because, you know, if, if this is his invention that spread around the world, how important is it? Very, I would say. It was said the economy rode on the sheep's back. And it was an indigenous man, the fourth of nine children, from a little mission on the banks of Lake Alexandrina that changed the fortunes of a nation. It wasn't a laser, it wasn't a helicopter, although David had designs for those too. It <laughs> was the mechanical hand shears, a simple but revolutionary design that sent ripples around the world. David was before his time, who had 19 paintings, things that we're still working on today. This man was a genius. In the early 19th century, sheep were shorn with blade shears, similar to garden clippers. Shearing by hand was a lengthy and arduous process that required great skill. Many pastoralists dreamed of a machine that could remove the fleece from a sheep quickly and efficiently. The first authenticated daily tally was only 30 sheep. By the time mechanical shears were the norm, an average shearer could shear in excess of 300 sheep a day. It's just amazing that something that he invented over 100 years ago and the, and the technology is still there in the in the handpiece. Uh, that is incredible, right? When something is invented so long ago, but it was so good that it's still the thing that is used today. You know, there's no invention that is has improved on on that invention 100 years ago, roughly 100 years ago. Uh, that's fascinating in itself, and 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 it's an incredible achievement to have created something that has stood the test of time. The cornerstone of Indigenous culture is based on respect and acknowledgement of those who came before. And David's legacy has acted as inspiration for some of this country's most influential leaders. My name is Mark Eller. I grew up at La Perouse with a family of 12. I was the first Indigenous rugby captain. Uh, I've been inducted into the Australian Sports Hall of Fame. You, know, you don't play to win awards. Um, but it's also nice to be recognised. David grew up in Point McLean Mission in South Australia, like I did at La Perouse. If David was born today, he'd be easily acknowledged as one of the most brilliant minds, uh, not only in Australia, but certainly the world. What David did was set the way for future Indigenous designers and inventors. How many people would know that David Unipont was the face on our $50 note? How many people would know what he's done? So even this guy asked the question, honestly, let me know. Did, did, did you know what David Unipon did? What, do you know? Because as I said, that is an incredible invention and I'm hoping there's more to the story. Some of the inventions that he came up with were just, again, just out of this world. When I think about what he's achieved, it makes what I've done in my life <laughs> insignificant. The design of the shearing handpiece 
is one of simplicity, precision and elegance. And it's one that has drawn the eye of the collectors amongst us. Well, my name's Bob Hoyer. I live out at Sutton, just outside the ACT. Um, I'm a professional wool classer. My first collection was probably 20 years ago when I went to a clearing sale with a mate. There was a pile of number three hand pieces, Woolsley, uh, in the heap that the scrap metal dealer had picked up. So I offered the uh, scrap dealer $25. He said, you can have the lot for 10. <laughs> so I walked away a happy uh, customer. The uh, availability of hand pieces, particularly the old ones, um, are pretty rare now. The principle from the late 1800s remains the same, that is a rotating uh, cutter over the blade uh, and after the mechanical ones were introduced, there were a number uh, of different designs being compressed air, driven, electrical driven and also vacuum driven. He was, uh, I, I believe, a self educated man. He, he showed an interest in things mechanical. I believe that he's not given enough credit for his involvement in the earlier days. I would say um, it seems like a lot of inventors and um, people that are creative, it's not about your education. It, it's not about going to the best schools around and, and being the most educated because creativity is up here. Quite often school is the thing that kills creativity. And to actually come up with these sort of mechanical devices and different inventions, you need that creativity to, to make your mind work. David's patent of the improved mechanical motion device that used the marvel of turning rotary motion into a reciprocal motion in a very small space greatly advanced the mechanical movement of the cutting blade and propelled the industry forward beyond anyone's expectation. Uh, the manufacturers modify them each year. It could be the back joint, it could be some simple, it could be the tension nut, but in reality, they, the they, they haven't changed all that much and um, uh, they still do the same job. It's like, um, think of a razor, a razor blade. You know, it's principally still the same thing. You know, maybe they've added more razors or um, they've added some moisture type stuff to the top of it, but it is ultimately the same thing. And that seems to be the same in this, this situation where, yeah, they've tweaked a tiny few bits, but it is the same thing that David created. For the better part of the 20th century, the shearing industry was the backbone of our nation. Quite simply, without wool and the men and women that produce it, our country would be a much different place. And the echo of David's legacy still resonates across the industry to this day. My name's uh, Ian Elkins and I actually uh, born and bred in a small country town uh, about an hour and a half north of uh, Canberra in, in Borua. My grandfather was a shearer and ever, ever since I was in primary school, you know, I only ever thought about uh, becoming a shearer. It'll be 40 years next, next February, uh, mm -hmm. as soon as I left school, so I, I got straight into shearing. I was lucky the Wool Corporation were running schools and I was lucky to get, get into one of those straight wow. up and I got into, into good, good habits. I didn't, I didn't think that was a thing. I, I, I suppose they teach people everything these days, but um, a school for shearing, I thought it was just passed down from father to son, father to daughter even, uh, mother to daughter, mother to son. Let's get it all in there. The plant that I, I sort of use all the time is a Heinecker Evo. I've shorn uh, all over Australia. I actually won a, an international competition in America in, in 1994. It's been a great, uh, great career for me. You know, I've carried the Olympic torch just through, through, uh, through the handpiece. You know, I've won, won the Australian Championships four times. So I, I don't take anything for, for granted and I'm very grateful for what this uh, wool industry has done, done for me. I've been very, very lucky that I was, uh, in uh, 2015, I was inducted into, into the Shearer's Hall of Fame, which I'm very... I think, looking at this picture, I'm just, just for the jokes, uh, he could do with a bit of a shearing, couldn't he? He could use the Shearer's on himself. <laughs> in uh, 2015, I was inducted into, into the 
Shearer's Hall of Fame, which I'm very humbled by to be in amongst some na names. You know, Doosan Smith and uh, the famous Jackie Howe was the original one in, in there. David Unipon painted the first uh, mechanical form of, uh, of the handpiece and that principle still ha hasn't changed over a hundred years later sort of thing. Like, you know, you've got rotational motion going into the back, back of the handpiece and in the middle of the handpiece the fork there and it changes to uh, reciprocating motion. Over the last 40 years, I mean, the handpieces, they run a lot cooler, a lot smoother. They did, but still, the principle hasn't changed. I mean, there's not too many inventions that sort of don't completely no. sort of change over time or become obsolete. So it's quite amazing that the handpiece, the principle hasn't changed. Well, it's been, been my life, and I'm pretty lucky that I've got a training job with uh, AWI and I can give back to, to the industry. We do some uh, demonstrations down at the Easter show sort of thing and, and uh, you know you, you might have a thousand people there and tell them about you know David Unipon and what, what he's done. And I think that's the important thing I think the current sheep shearers need to keep passing on the message and the words uh, about David Unipon. Um, it's almost got to come from them because he is he is the one that helped these guys do what they do so efficiently. I think they're almost the best people to pass pass the message on. And uh, hardly anyone sort of knows anything about for, for such a famous Australian. While the story of David Unipon has been largely untold, it's a story that should never be forgotten. A story of resilience, a story of determination, and a story of unbridled genius. David Unipon, the Australian Da Vinci. Brilliant, brilliant. What a man. What a man. I'm loving learning about these guys and girls. Uh, it, it's fascinating. But this man has, has changed this um, occupation completely. He has made so much possible. And, and as I said, wool, the wool industry, less so nowadays, but before, it was so huge, even in the UK. The wool industry was so important. It was so important. So to think that one man, David Unipon, changed things so much, and that invention has stood the test of time. Uh, incredible, just just incredible. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I really, really hope that you guys are too. Another learning lesson for this uh, for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying it, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.